Welcome back to the ping pong lesson part two. So in this short clip, I'm going to show you how to do the second part of your maze, which will add a few more components and dimensions to it. So just to recap, this is the game that we created last week with a simple maze where we move the ball to the end. In which case, when we get to the end, if I can get through there, we finish the game. Now, I've made some changes to it, and I'm just going to show you what the changes are uh, to, to which add an extra dimension to the game. So you'll notice on the screen three things that have come up: lives, score, and steps. And actually, if you can see, steps is continuing to grow there. So I just need to remove that for a second. Ooh. Okay, put that back in there. Run it. There we go. So we've got here the code that you did last week. So just to recap, you've got the section here that repeats and checks when you're going up, down, left and right. And if I touch the color black, which is the outline of these boxes here, then I change my lives by minus one and I move away minus steps. I'm going to show you how to create those extra variables. So we've got some extra variables at the beginning here. So remember how to do a variable. You click on variables, you go to make a variable and you give it a name. So let's say score, etc. And you've, I've made three variables, lives, score, and steps. And then I use this function here to say set lives to three. That's how many lives I want when I begin the game. Set my score to zero, because that's what uh, I want there. And set my steps to zero as well. I'll explain what steps is in a minute. And then remember this, go to X, Y, resets my ball to that position each time. So what I'm first going to do is change this repeat section. So this repeat section is going to keep on going until I'm touching the color green or my lives equals zero. And I'll explain the lives in a minute. Now, because we're going to have lives and the lives, what's going to happen is when I touch the wall, I want it to deduct some lives from me, right? So I've start off with three and I thought, well, if I go to the wall, I'm gonna, gonna lose a life. So what I've said here, I'm go I've got my variable lives and I'm gonna change my lives by one, but not one by minus one. So if I touch the wall, I lose a life. So I've grabbed that there and I've put it in there. So if I show you what I mean, do that. There you go, touch the wall, lost it, a life. We've gotta be careful not to touch the walls. But as part of that, I also need to keep on looping until either I've reached the end here or my lives equals zero. Now I've got this fairly complicated thing here, which I will dissect and show you. So I've got this the same as before. So I've got if in the sensing section, I'm touching a color and I've checked that the same color as the one I have there. So if I'm touching that color, then I'm going to, you know, something's going to happen. I've used this second bit here, which is the or operator. If you click on operators and you go on here, you'll see or. Now it said, this is an operator that says this event or that event. And in which case I'm going to put this in there. And the or bit, I've got to use this other operator called equals to. So you've got less than or greater than, you've got all the operators up here, plus, minus, divide, but I'm just going to use equal to. And I'm going to say, equal to, but then I'm getting my variable lives, this one here, dragging this across, and I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to say, if I'm touching the color and my lives is zero, then this is this op condition here. So I'm going to grab that whole lot and bang it in here. So I'm going to keep on looping this section of code until I either hit the end or I have no more lives left. Great. Let's see if that works. So, um, I can go along here. Now, obviously I'm trying not to hit the wall because if I do, I'm going to be in trouble. Whoa. Yes, I've done, hit the end. If I start again, I keep losing my lives. Again, it finishes. Now at the moment it finishes, which is why it works, but it's not telling me at the end, you know, whether I've succeeded in the game or whether I've in this case lost my lives and I've got no more lives over, the game's over. So that's the next bit I need to put in. I need to say, okay, how are we gonna change that? So I'm gonna use this thing called a, a, an if statement. And I'll just show you an if statement, not this one, and the one above it. 
Now, an if statement is really powerful, and we use it a lot in programming and, and, and in Scratch. Um, and if you go to the control events here, you'll see the if area here. Now, the if works by saying, if this condition is met, then do something. And then I'm also going to put this else bit, and I'll explain in a second. So again, I'm using the operator. So I'm going to say green section operator, which is this one. If that equals zero, then do something. And then I'm taking my variable lives over here, dragging that across, putting that in here. And I'm going to say, put that in there. So I'm going to say, if my lives equals zero, then do something. Now, the two things I can do, I can complete this game either by losing my lives or getting to the green bit and I have to differentiate between those two so I'm going to use this thing called broadcast and remember we did this last uh, lesson and the idea of broadcast it just sends a message out to the game so I'm going to go to events and I'm going to say broadcast I'm going to create a new broadcast new message and say in this case lost lives I'm going to create that and then I'm going to create another one called, and then you do the same again, called uh, Game Over. So I've got two messages, Lost Lives and Game Over. You can take whatever message you want. I'm going to put that one in there. So if I lose my lives, I'm going to broadcast the message Lost Lives. If I, if otherwise, Game Over. So it's going to finish this loop here, and it's going to come to the bottom and say, well, did I finish the game because I lost my life? If so, broadcast Lost Lives. No, broadcast Game Over. So now I'm going to create another sprite now this is the sprite we did the week before this is a new sprite now this new sprite in this costume i've got oh no you have no more lives and game over so i've created a costume with this this uh, sprite here put some text in and a gray box now to do the gray box you just simply draw the box now you'll notice when you're drawing the box that um oh, there we go that sometimes I've just created lots of boxes now. Delete that one. Oh, delete that one. Okay, make sure. Now, sometimes when you create a box, you might notice that it does that. And you think, well, where's my text gone? Because it, when you draw things, they go in layers. So what you need to do is click on that and move it back a bit so you get the text. Okay, we're happy with that. So now I've got this new sprite saying, oh, no, you have no more lives, game over. And I'll just move that so it's in the right place. And um, I've created two things. When I click, remember we did this last week, when clicked, I'm going to hide this message. When I receive the message lost lives, the broadcast message from the main code, I'm going to show myself. So I go in looks and I go show. So it shows the message. I'm going to hide it again. Go back to here. So now we've got this bit here. If lives equals zero, then broadcast lost lives, else game over. So it'll do those two messages. So now we've got, we're getting somewhere. We're getting a, you know, a, a sort of semi game. So we run it. If I lose my lives, there you go. It tells me a lot. And if I get to the end, it will do the other message. One more thing, uh, a few more things I've got. Now, we haven't done much with the score yet. So we've got the lives, we've got the loop. What about score? Well, I'm going to make it so the score um, will change every time I move. I'm also going to make it so that my steps move. So at this part of the game, we're just going to make it so that the score and steps are the same, basically. And, I, and I'll explain why I've kept them different in a sec. So what we need to do is say, okay, every time I move my keys, I need to change that score by my steps by one. I have to duplicate the CC each time because I have to do it for every direction that I go in. Copy um, in here. doesn't really matter where you put it. Duplicate. Oh, press my right key to duplicate. Did I du duplicate? Oh, no. Uh, duplicate. There we go. No, not that bit. Ah! Oh! Too many duplicates. Delete, delete. And now I've got this. Put that back in there and change that right there. Right. So now when I run, hopefully, you see my steps going up. And now so I've got my steps. That bit works great. My score, I might keep that differently because I might, what I might want to do in this development of the game, I might say, well, actually, I'll get some bonus points or things which aren't to do with steps, they're just score. So I could now just duplicate that and instead of changing steps by one, change my steps by score. Alternatively, if I want to be a little bit more clever, I could say, add some complex if function. So if my steps mod 30 equals zero, then change my score. Um, and then, you know, this 
stuff like this can can add dimensions to the game. I'll ex- this I will explain for those of you interested um, in the more complex math stuff. Again, I've used the same as what I did up here. I've used this uh, uh, the operator, and then I've bung this one in here, and it's all so the variable steps goes in there. The operator here is mod, and then I put that in there. And you're probably saying, what does mod mean? Mod means give me the remainder. So this is basically saying if the remainder of steps divided by 30, the remainder is zero. So mod 30, the remainder is zero. That means if, if I can divide by 30, then I'm going to change my score by 100. And if I wanted to do that, I could put that bit of code, duplicate it for each section in here. So rather than giving me score the same as steps, every 30 steps, I get one an extra 100 points in my score. So that 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 we could do that as well. And if you wanted to, you could develop this further by maybe adding some obstacles in the, in your maze. And if you hit an obstacle, so you could do another if statement, if touching sprite, then I'm going to deduct two lives or three lives. Or you could get a bonus. If I pick something up, I, if I touch it, I get more lives. So make and add some changes, uh, maybe add, again, develop the maze further. And we may look at maybe next lesson adding another maze. So if you get past this maze, we go to another set, another maze, a more difficult maze. So you have levels as well, and we can build that in. Great. Well, thank you for doing this, and and I hope you found it useful. Thank you.